Hey everyone, it's Prashant here. Welcome to my YouTube channel and thank you for joining me in today's video. Today we're going to be talking about net worth. We'll discuss what net worth means, how it's calculated, how it compares to others, and how it affects you. Let's dive right in. From time to time, you'll hear the terms net worth and high net worth individuals. To understand this, we should first understand what net worth means. The net worth of a person is defined as the sum of all of their assets minus the sum of their liabilities. This seems pretty simple, but it is important to keep in mind that a person's current income does not necessarily correlate with their net worth. For example, a person who's living in New York City and making $80,000 a year may have a net worth that is lower than a person living in Kansas City who's only making $50,000 a year. Let's dig into our hypothetical friends a little bit deeper to truly understand what's going on here. While we go through this example, I'm going to be labeling each of their assets with an A and each of their liabilities with an L so that it's easy for you guys to follow along. Guys, before we continue, I wanna take a moment to ask you to hit those like and subscribe buttons and share this video with somebody you think would find this content interesting, such as a friend or coworker. This helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and motivates me to keep making these videos. Let's continue. Let's say person name, let's call him Tim, lives in New York City with a couple of roommates. He went to college and then graduate school and is now making about $80,000 a year. He went to school out of state for five years and between tuition and living costs, he's racked up student debt of about $200,000. Since he started work seven months ago, he's been able to save up an emergency savings of $7,000. Since he doesn't need a car where he lives in New York City, he does not own one, so he doesn't have to make a car payment or a car insurance payment. Tim believes you can only spend the money that you already have, so he does not have any credit cards, so obviously he does not have any credit card debt. So his net worth can be calculated as follows. First, his asset, his emergency savings of $7,000. Second, his liability of student debt, of $200,000. So subtracting his liabilities from his assets, we get negative $193,000. So Tim's net worth currently is negative $193,000. Now let's say person B, let's call her Jane, lives in Kansas City, Missouri. She also went to college like Tim, but did things a little differently. She went to college in state and worked as a waitress when she was going to school to save some money. And now she has student loans of about $30,000. Since she started working seven months ago, she has been able to build emergency savings of $4,000. She has a used car that has a fair market value of $5,000 and she owes $4,000 in auto loans for that. She does believe in using credit cards for the cash back, but always pays whatever she owes on the credit card by the end of the month. So she has no credit card debt. Now let's calculate her net worth. Her first asset is her emergency savings of $4,000. Her first liability is a student debt of $30,000. Her second asset is a car, which has a fair market value of $5,000. And finally, her second liability, which is the auto loan on that car, which is $4,000. So once again, adding all of her assets and then subtracting the sum of the liabilities from that number, we get negative $25,000. Both Tim's and Jane's net worth is negative. That means the sum of their liabilities is greater than the sum of their assets. In other words, they owe more money than they currently have. However, even though both of their net worth is negative, we see that Jane's net worth is less negative than that of Tim's. In other words, Jane's net worth is higher than Tim's, even though Tim makes much more money than Jane does. So you see, a person's net worth is not necessarily tied to just their current income. We really have to take a look at their entire financial picture to get an idea of what their net worth really is. A person with a larger annual income can have a net worth that is lower than a person who makes less money than they do. It all depends on their entire financial picture. Now let us look at some high net worth individuals to see how mind boggling their net worth is. First up, we have Elon Musk at $197 billion. Second, we have Jeff Bezos at $182 billion. Next, we have Bill Gates at $132 billion. Then Warren Buffett at $88 billion. And finally, Mukesh Ambani at $76 billion. Note that most of these people's money is tied up in stocks in their own companies or in other companies. So as the fortunes of these companies go up and down, the net worth of these individuals goes up and down also. It's not like Warren Buffett has a giant bunker somewhere where he's keeping $88 billion in $20 bills. Now let us compare their net worth with the median net worth of the average American household. The median net worth in America is $94,670. This is a pretty high number, but unfortunately it hides a lot of details. The bottom 10th percentile of households in the US have a net worth of negative $3,500. The bottom 25th percentile of US households have a net worth 
of $5,556. The bottom 50th percentile of households have a net worth of $94,670. The bottom 75th percentile of households have a net worth of $359,400. And finally, the 90th percentile of American households have a net worth of $952,300. You'll notice looking at these numbers that the net worth of US households increases dramatically at the 75th percentile level and higher. Now let us talk a little bit more about the top 10% of US households. The top 1% of U.S. households have a net worth of over $10 million. The top 0.1% of U.S. households have a net worth of over $40 million. And this does not even come close to the net worth of individuals such as Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. Now remember, especially when it comes to the net worth of high net worth individuals, it is only an estimate and it's nearly impossible to know the actual net worth of these individuals accurately for a few reasons. One, billionaires usually don't go around walking down the street telling us what their net worth is. Two, most of these people's money is in the form of stocks or other holdings which go up and down with time, so their net worth can vary as well. Third, since we don't really know exactly which investments these people hold and what kind of returns they're getting on them, it becomes really, really hard to accurately know what their net worth might be. Okay, now that you understand what net worth is, you know the net worth of US households in general, and you know the net worth of some of the wealthiest people in the world, you might ask, Prashant, what can I do to increase my net worth? Now that is a great question, and it's one that I've given a lot of thought to. In order to answer this question, let us go back and look at the definition of net worth. If you remember, net worth is defined as the sum of all of your assets minus the sum of all of your liabilities. So you see the definition has two parts, assets and liabilities. So there are two broad things that you can do to increase your net worth. You either increase your assets or you decrease your liabilities. First, let us talk about increasing our assets. An asset is anything that puts money in your pocket. This can be something like rental real estate, which pays you rent, a stock portfolio, which gives you dividends as well as capital gains, or even a fine art collection that increases in value over time. Now, the easiest way to gain an asset, in my opinion, is to invest in stocks. I say this because the barrier of entry in investing in stocks is very, very low. In fact, a lot of brokerages today will allow you to open brokerage accounts and start investing with as low as just $1 using fractional shares. Not only that, your portfolio can start increasing the value the very next day after you start investing. For example, if you buy stock in a company for $20 and then tomorrow the stock price goes to $21, your net worth just went up by $1. This is the second advantage of having a stock portfolio, the ability to increase the value of your stock holdings and thus your net worth very, very quickly. Now, don't get me wrong, there is certainly a possibility of your stock portfolio losing value and thus bringing your net worth down. There is inherent risk involved in investing in stocks and you should carefully assess those risks and make sure you're comfortable with the risk that you're taking. For example, if you only have $1,000 in your bank account, I would not recommend putting this a dire $1,000 in the stock market. If the unthinkable happens and the value of your stock holdings drop by 30% the day after you buy it, you could be in a very bad spot. And if you think this cannot happen to you, let me tell you about the first stock I bought when I first opened my Robinhood account. I bought shares in the company Snap, which is the parent company of the app Snapchat, the day of their IPO. At the time, I thought this was a company with a great product that all young people around the world like to use, and there was nowhere for the stock to go but up. Oh, how wrong I was. I remember I bought shares for about $22 a share, and then I watched horrified as the share price stumbled to under $5. I lost 77% of my investment. If I had plowed all of my money into Snap, I would have been in a very bad position. Instead, I actually ended up using about $500 of disposable money into the stock. My thinking at the time was, if the stock goes up, it's great, I made some easy money. On the other hand, if the stock went down, then I lost $500 that I could afford to lose, and I ended up getting an education. Because this was not all of my money, I had no problem in just holding on to this investment and watching as the stock price steadily started going up. After three years, when the stock was trading at about $25, I finally ended up selling my investment, about breaking even on my original investment. A second way of increasing your net worth is to own rental real estate. If you can buy a home and rent it out to a tenant, now you have a fantastic asset that increases your net worth every month. If done correctly, this can pay off not only your mortgage and other costs of owning a home, it can even give you some leftover cash every month that you can then use to increase your net worth even more by investing in more stocks and more real estate. Now, there are many other types of assets that you can buy, and honestly, you're only restricted by your own imagination. The important thing is to buy assets that you truly understand and make sure you're getting a decent amount of return on your investment while taking on an acceptable amount of risk. Now that we've talked about increasing our assets, let us turn our attention to decreasing our liabilities. 
A liability is anything that takes money out of your pocket. Obviously, once we understand this, it is easy to see why we must lower our liabilities in order to increase our net worth. I personally believe this is much easier to do than increasing your assets. Decreasing your liabilities can be done in much the same way as decreasing your expenses. I made a video about decreasing your expenses a few weeks ago that I'll link in the description below. Do go ahead and check it out after this one. The trick to lowering your liabilities is reconsidering every liability that you have. For example, do you really need the car you have or can you get away with a cheaper one or perhaps without one at all? Can you lower your rent by moving into a smaller or a less fancy apartment? Can you lower your rent by getting a roommate? Can you refinance your mortgage at a lower interest rate to lower your monthly payment whilst, while not increasing your overall debt? Can you pay off that credit card debt quickly? As with increasing your assets, there are many different choices of lowering your liabilities. And what is best for you really truly depends on your unique situation. That's all I have for you guys in today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I promise I will get back to you as soon as I can. Also click that thumbs up icon and hit the subscribe button. This helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm and helps my channel reach many more people who are interested in the personal finance journey. Please go ahead and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified instantly when I post a new video. I will be posting one video every week with great new financial content and I would love to see you there. And follow me on Instagram where I post every week. I'll be leaving the handle in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.